Hello, so welcome. We're going to go through the um, May 2015 Atoms, Bonds and Groups paper today. Right, so let's make a start. Right, so the uh, first question is fairly straightforward. So it's given me the atomic number of a cerium and uh, given me a iron of cerium. And it wants me to tell the relative charge of the proton. Um, so obviously the relative charge of a proton is plus one. A neutron is going to be zero and an electron is minus one. The number of each particle present, well they told me the atomic number, so um, which is 58. Neutron, well that's going to be, they told me the atomic number is 58. The mass number is 140. So 140. Mass number, remember, is protons plus neutrons. Um, 140 minus 58 comes to 82. And then finally, number of electrons. You've got to be careful here because it's the iron that you're looking at there. If it's got an atomic number of 58, the atom would have 58 electrons. However, it's the iron, so it's lost two of those electrons. So it now has 56 electrons. Okay, a cerium behaves as a typical metal, reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to form cerium 3 sulfate. What's the second product? Well, it's metal plus acid gives me a salt plus hydrogen, of course. So your second product is going to be hydrogen. Write the formula of cerium 3 sulfate. Okay, so cerium 3 plus. And then sulfate is going to be SO4 2 minus. So I've got too many uh, pluses, so let's add another SO4 2 minus. Four minuses, three pluses, so let's have another cerium. So I've now got six pluses, so I need another sulfate. Now I've got six minuses, six pluses, so the formula is going to be Ce2 brackets SO4, 3. So I'm now going to explain what's happened to cerium. Um, it started off as CE and it became CE3 plus um, during the uh, reaction and therefore it has lost three electrons. How has a salt been formed in this reaction? Well, it's basically the definition of a salt. The hydrogen ion has been replaced by a metal ion. Um, you started off with sulfuric acid and you made Ce2SO4-3. So the hydrogen ion has been replaced by cerium ion. Okay, so time to do some calculations now. Um, europium, at top number 63, reacts with oxygen at room temperature, gives me the equation there. I need to calculate the volume of oxygen required to react with 9.12 grams of europium. So the first thing you're going to do is calculate moles of europium. You've been given a mass, so that's the first thing you're going to do. Let's just get the board right. Okay, so that is going to equal my mass, 9.12 grams, over the relative atomic mass of europium, which is 152.0. That comes to 0.06 mole. Okay, we've got to now convert that into moles of oxygen. If you look at your equation, for every four europiums, you need three oxygens. So, the way to do it is you divide by four. So divide by the big number of the moles you just worked out, times it by the moles of the thing you wanna find. So divide by four, times by three, 0 0.045 moles. And now I need to convert that into a volume of O2. Notice that they want that in centimetres cubed. You should be able to remember that um, the volume is moles times 
4,000 to get it into centimetres cubed. And if you do that, you get 1,080 centimetres cubed. Uh, right, okay, so we're now going to look at some empirical formulae. Um, what is meant by the term empirical formula? That's straight off a uh, definition. It's the simplest whole number ratio uh, of atoms in a compound. Determine the empirical formula. Um, I'm just going to shift the board up a little bit so that we can use as much space as possible. So the way to do this is you've got oxygen, sulfur, and TM. You write your percentages underneath, 30.7 for oxygen, 15.4 for sulfur, and 53.9. And then you divide by um, the relative atomic number, or the molar mass. So for oxygen, I'm going to divide that by 16. For sulfur, divided it by 32.1. And for uh, thorium, it's going to be divided by 168.9. If you do that, that becomes 0 0.319. Sulfur becomes 0 0.480. And oxygen becomes 1.92. You then divide by the smallest one. So if you do that, the smallest one is actually uh, thorium. So that becomes one. Sulfur becomes 1.5. And oxygen becomes six. Now, obviously, you can't have 1.5 in a formula. That would be madness. So you times all of those numbers by two to give you 12, three, and two. And therefore, the formula is TM2S3O12. Okay, so carrying on, we need to state the number of electrons in the fourth shell of deuterium. So let's do that. Um, so well, let's go through the working. Um, in shell number one, I have two electrons. In shell number two, I'm going to have eight electrons. In number three, it's 18 electrons. In shell number four, I'm also using the F subshell as well. So I need to add 14 to that to give me 32 electrons. So 32 is a number that you need. How many orbitals are there in the third shell? So let's have a look. The third shell consists of an S, a P, and a D subshell. The S has one orbital, the P has three orbitals, and the D has five. So if you add them all up, you get to nine. Okay, so let's move on to question two now. Aluminium will combine directly with fluorine. Write the equation for that. So let's do that. We've got aluminium plus fluorine. Remember, fluorine is diatomic to give me aluminium and fluoride. Well, aluminium is in group three. It's going to form Al3 plus ions. Fluorine, of course, will form fluoride F minus. So I need three of those to counteract the three pluses. So it's AlF3. You've then got a balance that. So you need a two there a three there and a two there to get it to work out. What is meant by the term ionic lattice in terms of the type and arrangement of particles present? Well, you know it's made up of oppositely charged ions. Whoops. Made up of oppositely charged ions. And it's going to be in a repeating pattern. That's where you get a giant ionic lattice from.
OK, so we're now going to draw a dot and cross diagram of aluminium fluoride. Obviously, we've just said aluminium fluoride is ionic. So aluminium has lost its three outer shell electrons. So that just becomes Al3+. plus. Each fluorine atom has seven electrons, like so. But he's going to gain one from the aluminium, so you're going to end up with three of those. So one of those, three of those. Right. Solid bro bro boron tribromite has a simple molecular structure. So you'll be thinking, I've never heard of boron tribromite before. What is this madness? Well, you would have, I'm sure, come across boron trifluoride. And of course, fluorine and bromine are in the same group. So it'd be very, very similar to that. What is meant by a term covalent bond? You obviously know that's a shared pair of electrons. Draw a dot and cross diagram. So, you should be happy with this. Born, of course, is in group three, so has three outer shell electrons. Bromine is in group seven, so we'll have seven electrons. So don't forget to add your seven electrons around your bromine. 